Welcome back to the Reckless Wrench Garage. This episode has been a long time coming and I'm really excited to be bringing this little series to you guys. We have a new axle build and it's going to be the front axle for the Ranger. Now if you guys haven't watched the off-road battle, stop what you're doing right now. Go to the off-road battle, give yourself 40 minutes and watch that. As you guys know, in the off-road battle, I busted my passenger axle shaft. So what happened, I hooked up to the Suburban in the tug-of-war, and <laughs> I laid into it on the throttle. The U-joint, it looks like the caps, one of those let go, and then backed out, U-joint popped, and pretty much took out the ears of the Cromoly axle shaft with it. So the shaft was junk. Luckily, I had a spare, got that swapped out, and we were able to finish that. But it's a Dana 44 behind lower gears, an Atlas transfer case, a V8 engine, and a driver that sometimes makes questionable decisions. So, it is time that we build a stronger, better axle for the Ranger. And with that, without further ado, here it is. Whoa! <laughs> so, stick around while we build this 609 axle for the Ranger. The 609 axle, what the heck is it? Some of you might have never heard of that before. This is a hybrid axle taking the best parts of the 4.9 inch, which is the center section differential, and the outer parts of a Dana 60, so axle shafts, hubs, unit bearings. Uh, some of them will utilize stock knuckles. I'm not, uh, we'll get in that later. But we take the best of two axles, combine them together, and build a 609. This axle is going to be great in the front of the Ranger for several reasons, and I'll get into some of those here in a bit. I've been collecting parts for this thing for over a year, and it's finally all coming to fruition, and we're going to put it all together. You guys will get to watch it. The first part of this series is going to be building the center section. We're going to get back to the housing and get into that in the next episode. That will be part two. So for the time being, we won't really be focusing on that. We're really just going to be focusing on building the center section of the 609. With the 609 build, I had a couple objectives in mind. Number one, get an axle as strong as a Dana 60 or stronger. And number two, get an axle as light as a Dana 44. Lightweight and strength aren't necessarily two things that are always going to go well together. The 609 is a unique type of build that will allow me to build a very lightweight axle, but retain a high amount of strength. The center section uses the Ford 9 inch drop out third member. Now, I could just get a typical low pigeon third member, you know, cast iron thing, put it together, throw it in there, and be good to go. The Ford 9 inch has a very low pinion, uh, the typical one, and I don't want that to catch on rocks or sacrifice driveline angle for that. So, I decided to go with a high pinion Ford 9 inch. Now, Ford never made a high pinion 9 inch. This is a totally custom setup made by the company called True High 9. True High 9 is the only company that can make a true high pinion 9 inch. So what that consists of, they have their own proprietary cast iron third member for the high pinion 9 inch. And this could be run front or rear, however I'm doing a front setup. And they have the only machine that is capable of cutting the reverse section 9 inch gears. So no other company that is out there has the capability to make this type of differential. True High 9 is the only game in town when it comes to this. I ordered the True High 9 parts kit. This is everything that's gonna come with. You're gonna get your cast iron nodular dropout, your adjusters, you get a yoke. I chose a 1350 forged yoke. You're gonna get uh, pinion support. This is, they use a Yukon pinion support and it comes with the bearing races already in, so that's kind of nice. Two carrier retainers, low bolt, drain plug, fill plug, and you get a uh, pinion shim stack. We're gonna go with a Grizzly Yukon locker. These are just tried and true. They just freaking work. Like you don't have to worry about airlines, anything like that, rupturing. You, you don't have to turn anything on. All you do is you lock in your hubs and you go. And then we have a 513 gear set. I am upgrading from the current 456s that are in the 44 
and we're going with a deeper gear. I'm looking forward to that. That's going to give me a lot more low end torque, more crawl ability. I will sacrifice a little bit of RPMs on the highway, so that's kind of a downside with that, unless I bump up to 40 inch tires, which now with a stronger axle, I'll be able to. So this is the direction we're going to go. We are going to throw this thing together, stick around. If you guys want to watch this axle build from the assembly on the table to the install on the truck, make sure you hit that subscribe button. This is going to be at least a three part series, uh, putting all this together. I'm excited for it. So let's get to putting this thing together. The first part of putting together a four nine inch from scratch is going to be assembling the pinion cartridge. Now the pinion of the four nine inch is kind of unique. Dana axles, uh, the Ford 8.8, .8, some other axles like that, they don't have this third pinion bearing. So you notice the snout on the tip of the pinion, a little bearing goes in there and it gets installed in the third member itself. So not only do you get two pinion bearings supporting on the aft end, you get one on the front, so that way you're secured here and here to really control pinion deflection and it is a very strong design. Before you start your install, one thing always check. So on aftermarket gear sets, like these ones that I got, so there's gonna be a couple numbers that you wanna be mindful of. On the pinion, we have one, it says 1.021. This is the pinion depth that was set at the factory before they sent it out, so they'll mesh the gears together. If you have a pinion depth tool, this is gonna be important for you to know, so write that down. Uh, I do not have a pinion depth tool. They're very expensive. They're like 300 bucks for a decent one. So I will show you guys how to install this without one. So you want to keep note of that. And then you'll also notice it says K47. And then on our ring gear, look at that, K47. So that lets, lets you know that these two gears were made it together and they actually check the pattern. So you can see that they check the pattern on there to make sure they could get a good pattern with them. That is what we're going to be trying to get our pattern to look like. So take a picture of that before you clean these up, because that's going to be the next step. Get some solvents, clean up your gear sets, and then we will put together the bearings on this guy. After you press the inner bearing onto the pinion shaft, put the solid spacer and shims onto the pinion, followed by the pinion support and outer bearing. The shim stack will set the pinion bearing preload, which is essentially how tight the bearings are against their races. Do not install the pinion seal until after the pinion bearing preload is set. While torquing the pinion nut to 200 foot-pounds, rotate the pinion to make sure it is not binding up. Once the pinion nut is torqued, Check how much force it takes to spin the pinion with an inch pound torque wrench. Preload should be between 13 to 15 inch pounds. My initial preload was too low at 4 inch pounds, so I need to take it all apart, reduce the height of the shim stack, and put it back together and remeasure. After adjusting the shim stack a couple times, I was able to get the preload dialed right into 14 inch pounds. Now that we have the preload set, we're going to take the pinion nut and yoke off again, add the pinion seal, and assemble for the last time. Next, press the ring gear onto the carrier and add red thread locker to the bolts and torque to 70 foot-pounds. I froze the grizzly locker for about six hours to make pressing the ring gear and the carrier bearings on a little bit easier. Add the o-ring and pinion shim to the pinion support and then drop it into the third member. Mm. 
Once a pinion is installed, you could drop the carrier and ring gear in. Put the side adjusters in and make sure they move freely and are not cross-threaded. Next, torque the carrier bearing caps to 80 foot-pounds. Once the caps are torqued, you can adjust the backlash. Backlash is the distance between the ring and pinion gears and is easiest to be described as this noise. It sounds about right. To increase backlash, you move the ring gear away from the pinion, and to decrease backlash, you move it towards the pinion. Use the dial indicators to set backlash at seven to 10 thousandths. To adjust the backlash, you simply loosen one side adjuster and tighten the opposite side adjuster to move the ring gear. Since we have our backlash set, we are going to run a pattern real quick. One thing that helps to get a visible pattern is just mix a little bit of gear oil in with your paint, just, just a touch, you don't need too much. And a lot of times that really helps get a more visible pattern. It's one of the biggest issues that I've seen is just getting a pattern that's nice and readable. You want to check in a couple different spots. I'm painting way more than I need to. As Chris would say, we want a happy pattern. And if we don't like it, we'll just turn it into a bird. When you are spinning your gear set, it helps to put a little bit of drag on the ring gear with your hand to get a nice visible pattern. If you need to adjust your pinion depth, just remove the pinion support and change out the shim. Make sure you readjust backlash every time you change the pinion shim. I had to adjust my pinion depth once to get a pattern that was acceptable and match very closely with the pattern that was painted on the gear set when we started. One thing that's awesome about this True High 9 third member are these two ports on the side of the ring gear. This allows me to install a load bolt or a thrust block, whatever you want to call it, in here, and this will actually support the ring gear and pr help protect against deflection. So it is going to ride just above the ring gear and give any additional support if I ever do get deflection on it. This thrust block or load bolt, it's going to give me a lot of added strength uh, in the third member, it's going to reinforce the gear set a lot. Um, if I was doing racing like King of the Hammers or something like that, I would probably install a second load bolt. Um, but for my application, it's really not going to be necessary. Um, one thing to note, the locker, it does need to be machined down on the radius on the outer edge to allow for clearance of the thrust block. Get some red Loctite on there. There's no way to check the clearance of the load bolt in the housing because it's back behind the ring gear and the carrier. So what you want to do, so you're going to be spinning the ring gear and you're going to tighten this until you feel it bind up right there. So just right there, it has enough pressure on the ring gear that I really can't move it. So once you get to your contact point on the ring gear right there, you're going to back it out a quarter of a turn. So we're gonna go right about there's a quarter. And True High 9 told me on the phone when you do that, it's that's gonna give you about 150 thousandths clearance on the ring gear to the thrust block. Oh yeah, ring gear moves freely, perfectly fine. And then we're gonna tighten this down. All right. And double check. Yep. Moves good. Well, the first part of the 609 axle build is done. I'm really excited to get this axle in the front of the Ranger and really test it out. 
The high pinion is going to give us plenty of ground clearance and a great drive shaft angle underneath the truck. A little bit deeper gear set in the 513s, that's going to be awesome to try out. I'm pretty stoked about that. Uh, now, before I just go and throw this thing in there and do a four-wheel drive burnout, a couple things to remember. Number one, I need to service it. before. I, a lot of people forget to fill up their differential after they service it, especially whenever you're building an axle off to the side and it might be a couple months before it's fully installed. This calls for 85 140 weight non-synthetic gear oil. That is the specs from True High 9. I'm going to follow those, so that's what's going to get dumped in the axle when it's finished. And we need to make sure we break in the gear set. We're not just going to go romp it off-road and hope for the best. We're going to do a series of heat up and cool down cycles. I'll drive it for about 10 miles, stop, let it cool for a minimum of 30 minutes uh, before I do any more cycles on that. So True High 9 recommends if you have a towing or racing application, try and get a break in of two to 300 miles. And they also recommend at 500 miles you drain the fluid and replace it just to get any debris and coatings that were on the gears out of the third member. So I will follow that as well. All right, I hope you guys liked this episode. Hit that thumbs up button if you did. Uh, the next episode, I'm going to be putting together the axle housing. So we're going to assemble the knuckles, get this third member installed in there, put some brakes on it. It's going to be awesome. So make sure you stick around for that. Comment down below if there's something in this axle build you want to see. So keep in mind, we have the axle to assemble and we still have to put it underneath the truck. So if there's anything you want to know, drop it down in the comments and I'll see if I can throw that in a video. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you're able to learn something from this. And as always, stay reckless. Alright, I like that much better.